Welcome ladies and gentlemen to another horror game. This is the casting of Frank Stone. In the prologue we saw Deputy Sam thwart the efforts of Frank Stone as he tried to maybe throw a baby into a furnace? We're not entirely sure. There was a woman with a hood. That's as much as we know. If this game starts with the prologue, um, I will skip that and get straight into the action. If you want to see that, you can check out the video. I will leave the link in the description below as always. Uh, please like or dislike the video, sub if you haven't already. Let's die alone together. Let's play a new game of the Carson of Frank Stone. I've sacrificed everything searching for it. A world within a story whispered to me centuries ago. Of a timeless power, infinite in knowledge, voracious in hunger. The Entity. A realm so close to ours, but always out of reach. Until I found him, Frank Stone. My key, my killer. I am Augustine Lieber, and I'm about to change our worlds forever. So here we go. Um, yeah. Oh, skip the prologue. I uh, attempted to make all the choices that I had before, and I think I did. So we are starting with Madison, who sad wow. sigh. You think her mum is no longer with us? Um, yeah. You know, sometimes you just wake up and you see the trees and the leaves. All right. That is a cool glass. I do like it. But apparently, it's not a collectible. Is there anything else in the room before we go exploring? Apparently not. Can I go through this door? No, I cannot. All right. Well, looks like we're um, heading out. Ah. I don't think that's your mum. I think you just saw yourself, no? We can't run. Feel like we're in some PT-esque loop. Yes, because we're back in the room. Hmm. Ah, and the photo's starting to get scratched of her mother. So maybe Madison and the wallpaper is starting to peel from the walls. So is it each time we go through a loop, things become a little bit more degraded, a little bit more pungent. All right, are we in the upside down? Very Stranger Things. Oh, oh back to normal. Okay, yeah. Now the room is completely. Let's just check that photo again. Yeah, it's getting more scratched. Her mother's face is becoming more obscure. Can we look out the window? Is there anything out here? Uh. Ah, we're outside in the woods. Yeah, I wanted to try and... Okay, I'm lighting up. Very Avatar-esque. I'm lighting up the, the grass as I walk on it. I wanted to try to attempt to keep everything, all the choices, decisions I made from the prologue, just in case it has any kind of effect in the um, 
later game. I'm not sure it will do. That just seemed to me the the kind of prologue just seems like a bit of a tutorial. Um, but we are we are avataring our way through this misty woodland area as we squeeze through the rocks. So who's Madison, and what is she to the overall game? Seen as the prologue took place in 1967, was it? Would she be the right age to be the baby? Ah, uh, TV. Mother, What's why wrong? are you crying? I don't think that's your mother, Madison. I think that's a spectral beast. I'm here. Everything's all right. It was a dream within a dream. Where are we? Where are we flying to? That's what I want to know. Get a grip. Hmm. A compact, perhaps? Are we in the UK now? Has Madison travelled to the UK? Uh, Manor, I see a manor. Oh, someone's broken down. Is that a hitchhiker? Hmm. Oh, we got... Yeah, let's stop. Why not? Nothing untoward about stopping for a hitchhiker in the middle of uh, some country lanes. I advise it for all of you, if you ever find yourself in the same situation. <clears throat> so, uh, you need a lift? Reynolds got a flat. Oh, you're American! Yeah. America! So am I. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so... Do you mind giving me a lift? Right, sure, of course. You can drop me off at Garrett Manor. It's just a few miles up the road. Oh. Huh, weird. That's actually where I'm going, too. Funny, so it's that. It's not out of your way. Uh, guess not. Okay, this this lady seems to be a little bit like... Uh, she could be a bit more... You know, a bit more uh, enthusiastic about being helped by a stranger who's just pulled up. You chose to pick up the hitchhiker. Hmm. Maybe that wasn't the best decision we've made. She wasn't really thankful for the fact. She's like, American! She's like, yeah. So we're both going to the same place, huh? What are so. of that? Yeah. I mean, I guess it's not all that odd, seeing as, you know, we're already pretty close, and I don't think this road goes anywhere else. So, did you say you were going to Garrett Manor for business, or...? I did not. Oh. So, um... The subtext is... Where are you from? From? Do not ask me. Like, where do you live? 
Paris. That's where I'm from, currently. Before that, I was from Amsterdam, Dublin, Milan, Los Angeles. She moves around a bit. And Oregon, once upon a time. That's cool. Hey, my mom's from Oregon. Well, one of them is. I always heard it was really nice. Or kind of a shithole, but like a really nice kind of shithole. I mean, I wouldn't know anyway because I've never been. I'm a big apple girl, born and raised. Barely even made it north of 14th Street before going off to college. Here in England? Uh, no, Berlin, actually. Oh, I'm Maddie, by the way. Linda. It's nice to meet you, Maddie. Yeah, you too. Even if I was worried you might try to clonk me. Ah, <laughs> uh, sorry. She in- oh god. So, what do you know about this manor we're both coincidentally going to? Hmm. What do you know about it? <laughs> Hold on now, that's not fair. I asked you first. Okay, well... I don't know anything, and I'm guessing neither do you. Mm, I didn't say I didn't know anything. Yeah, you did. You could tell. By Kinda. not saying anything. Yeah. All I know is that I was invited for a personal audience with Augustine Lieber, and that that was supposed to be super fancy or something, and that it would be in my best interest not to turn it. She down. was the robed woman from the very beginning. Hmm. Mm. What? My invitation was pretty much the same. Hmm. Linda is grateful you pulled over. If that's even her name. She could have given us a fake name. Hey, take a look. Ah, oh, the country manor estates. Yes. I think we've come to the end of the rainbow. Very Wayne Manor esque. Very Batman. Um, and here we go. Chapter two in the House of Darkness in 2024. Hmm. I have noticed at the start of each segment, anytime a new scene begins, there there does seem to be some stuttering issues. And that's probably half my bad, because my rig is not the uh, the best. But this also place is definitely a little too you know, uh, could be the game. On the nose. I was gonna say a little too much like a horror movie. Who wouldn't like a exactly. gothic manor to live in? So um do we just knock or they're sure. expecting us. Oh, a doorbell. That's a really cool doorbell. I want one. I want one for myself. Maybe nobody's home. This is definitely when I was told to get here. Mm, me too. Hello? Anybody home? It's a good rule of thumb to try every door. No, oh, you think? Well, they're expecting us, aren't they? No way is it. Do we just yes way. go in? Hmm. Why are you asking me? Because you're a grown-up. So are you, Maddie. <sighs> then, uh, here we go. Apparently. Why are all the lights off? Beats me. Because it's a creepy, creepy place. Although when we were driving up, the lights seemed to be on. Hello? Let's take a look around. Hmm. Let's. Um. Hello? We've arrived. Look around and find Augustine Libia. Um. Okay. Yeah, we didn't actually ask Linda how her car had broken down, did we? I mean, it does give you 
options to say certain things, but it only gives you like five seconds to do that. This is our collectible box. So yeah, I did actually find uh, another collectible in the prologue, little horsey. I don't know if these things are actually going to mean anything or if it's just literally going to be, you know, for achievement hunting's sake. Um, can't seem to find anything here. Can't talk to Linda, or so you say your name is Linda. I have my doubts, but we'll see that. So we're going upstairs, I guess. Uh, or do we go into the middle here before we attempt to go upstairs? Let's try the ground floor, I think. Let's get the ground floor all sorted out. Locked. So, not this way then. Well, not through there. This seems a bit more lively. Well, let's just try here first. No. Oh, we don't want to transition into another scene just yet. Maybe we can go upstairs then and have a little looky round. Ah. This is kind of freaking me out. Huh. Even I could play this. A survivor's theme. Hmm. Interesting. Chessboard. And that's apparently it here. Let's just go a little bit further up. We investigate the paintings. Perhaps we can find out who our host is through the paintings. No, apparently not. Can't even check the the little bureaus. Ah, ah ha ha ha! Really digging these creepy cottage core vibes. There shall be more clues. Um, Bruno Stanford III, Esquire. Behind all good ideas is a plan. Behind all great ones is Looking Stan. Looking forward to doing business with you. If you mean what you promise. That's I'm sure this today. evening will be worth both our whiles. See you on the 13th and please call me Stan. P.S. Got a good number for one of those British black cabs? My usual guy's indisposed, so to speak. I think we might not be the only ones here. Business connoisseur? He's a snob about business? Yuck. Alright, Linda. I don't judge someone just by their goddamn business card. Miss Lieber, I'm right to confirm that, as per your instruction, I have asked the staff to take leave and vacate the grounds ahead of your visitors' hour of Ryan. I recall hearing mention that your visitors are all collectors with a shared interest to yourself. If this is the case, would it not be preferable, even desirable, to keep one trusted staff member on hand to handle any precious items if required? Interesting. I recommend myself for this duty, and do not consider it below my station, for I would relish the chance to glimpse and handle your precious items in the private reliquary, should it be needed. I am only a short drive away, if called upon, and you needn't concern yourself with discretion. In my three years of service as a state manager of Garant Manor, I have proven to be a model of reserve, propriety, and reliability. I await your response with keen anticipation, your devoted servant, J.F. Grimes. Hey, I think I figured out why there's no one here. What? Why? I think they must have forgot we were coming and went on a trip or something. Hmm. Maybe. I don't think that's the case at all. I think she wanted this manor alone to do her... Ah, we knew... Do you ah. Well... Um... I know the notes, right? Whoa. Ah, secret doors. Right? So uh, by yeah. finding, uh, we can chat. You've seen a real secret passage before. It's fairly common for old mansions like these to have concealed corridors. All right, Linda. To allow the servants to come and go while being seen as little as possible. You got some of these in your house too, huh? Secrecy is a privilege of the rich, stolen from the rights of the oppressed. Okay. Hmm. So if we hadn't found the music note from up above, then we wouldn't have been able to play the piano. Is that what we're saying here? So there might be 
areas that we can't get past if we haven't already seen items. Oh, we've got another little doll here. Hmm. The Huntress, the lullaby that haunts the dark forest. Doll on their Christmas list. I'm not going to find all the relics. I think that's pretty much we're going to say in this playthrough. I'm not going to be able to find all of them. Or probably all the collectibles either. But I'll give it my gosh darn try. And does this bring us back uh, full circle, eh? Yes. So we found a little... I think that was just a little Easter egg area. Linda seems to have disappeared. I don't think that's a bad thing. Didn't exactly get explicit directions as to what to do once I got here, so... <laughs> yeah, um, same. Hmm. I am so sorry. Where are my manners? My name is Stan. Ah, Stan, the hair bun man. Maddie. The Maddie. guy with the business card. Beautiful name. Short for... Madeline. That's right, douchebag. Madison, bag. actually. Ah. Middle name, Lexington? What? Midtown. The Big Apple? The, the city that never sleeps. Home to the most beautiful of women and fiendishly desperate of men. Oh dear. Madison Avenue. Okay, got it. A fitting name for such a lovely lady. Wow. Turn in on the charm, Stan. Oh. Okay, so we don't have a timer on this one. So, been here a while. This place is Creep Town, right? Stan, as in short for Stanford, because yes, we do have his business card. So, let's go with that one. Stan, that wouldn't be short for Stanford, would it? <laughs> I see my reputation precedes me. I wouldn't call it that, Stan. Bruno Stanford the Third. That's your back and call, but only if you call me Stan. I'm going to call you Douche Canoe from now on. Oh, Stan, this is Lynn Da Castle. I am such a huge fan of your work. Ah. I am I'm at a loss for words. I am just humbled by your presence. Uh, oh, okay. Sure. Bruno Stanford the third. That's your back end call. Only if you call me Stan. Right. <laughs> sure. Truly an honor. <laughs> Is Linda Truly. Castle a writer, perhaps? Uh so what's going on right now? Uh well. I think our new friend here oh, is familiar with some of my little oh, movies. Hold on, hold on. Your movies are a lot of things, but they are not little. You're a filmmaker? Uh, yeah. I've made some movies. <laughs> a lot more than some movies, if I may say so. Have you heard of a little film called Buried by the Break of Dawn? By the Break of Dawn. Bloodbenders. Blood the blade may swing in both directions, but death only moves in one. That's quite a long name um, title for a film. No. Sorry. Wait. Didn't you two come here together? Oh, no. I mean, yeah, we drove in together, but only the last couple miles. I had some car trouble. I see. I'm sorry. I thought that you were Miss Castle's assistant. Ooh. Is that stuttering again? Oh, dear. That one seems quite bad. That one seems like it could crash the game. I don't know. <laughs> nope. Just me. Wait. Should I be flattered or insulted by that? Mm, oh, well, I'd be insulted. I, I didn't mean. I'm just flattered you think I have an assistant. I'm sure if you did, she would not be nearly as charming as, as Miss Avenue. Your last name is Avenue? Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> what? Did I miss something? Only that we are at a loss at what to do in the absence of our host. You were there, Linda, Wherever when he helped made, made the whole Madison Avenue quote. Oh, around. God damn. I mean, why not at this point? Maybe our host has left something out for us. What Look do you around. do, Stan? Oh, I won't bore you with all the details, but it involves money and fast cars and trading. But well, nothing illegal, obviously. Oh, obviously. Uh. A bit of light bedtime reading. I'm not going to read all of this. Um, you can pause and read for yourself. Uh, I'm just going to glean through it. Uh, I'm not sure this is going to actually have any 
relevance, but Gilgamesh. Um, hmm. A book attempting to illustrate to Norman how acts of violence could be heroic. Hmm. So what do we think of Stan, the hair bun man? He obviously is a fan of Linda Castle's movies. Ah, do we have a dumb waiter here? Oh, no, we don't want to go. That's a transition. There was another door. I'm just going to see if there's anything around here. This is what these games do. A lot of running around, walking around, seeing things. Some of them... No, that's locked. So, okay. In that case, then. But apart from the book, I can't really see anything else in here. Apart from progressing the story forward. Huh. Movie poster inside a cabinet. Dare you enter the murder mill. Hey, either of you heard of murder mill? Holy shinobi. You're kidding, right? No. Not the only one around here who's familiar with it. Mm. Wait. This is one of yours? Ah. It's one of the first things I ever worked on. Super low budget. We had no idea what we were doing. Should never have seen the light of day. I still wish it hadn't. Why? Well, things tend to get blown out of proportion. I heard it was only screened a few times. And each time, the audience flew into a rabid, murderous rage. No, no, come on. Don't try and deny it. The film is legendary. Look, I'm sure they made you sign all sorts of non-disclosure agreements, but... What? Who? The government. When they confiscated and destroyed every existing copy of the film. I heard they kept at least one. We've got some audio lost the there on some of Linda's words. Leary's Memorial Institute, where they use it for enhanced interrogation. How do you know all this? I'm a fan. Hmm. And it pays to know this kind of stuff. So we've got a film that's mainly in the kind of realm of like Stanley Kubrick's 2000, uh, not 2001, uh, Clockwork Orange when it was like taken out of distribution. A lost legendary film. And would this be our robed figure? Yes. I see you three have wasted no time getting acquainted with each other. I'm so very sorry for the delay in my arrival. There are a great many things that require my attention at the moment, and I would hate to have to deprive you of my full attention while we are together. <clears throat> ah, yes, and speaking of needing attention... Uh, all dried up, are we? We can't have that. After all, you're far too capable of a negotiator when you're sober. And twice that when I'm not. <laughs> Madison. Would you also like a refreshment? Ah, uh, it's just Maddie. Oh, my mistake, Maddie, it is. Oh, it's fine. Nonsense. Never be shy about what you call yourself. Your name is who you are. That's important to remember. And who are you? I call myself Augustine Lieber. Nice to meet you, Augustine Lieber. Now that we are properly introduced, I must again offer you a drink. Never take a drink. Never take a drink. Uh, no, that's okay. You sure? It's very good. I can confirm. <laughs> One way to get spiked. Yeah, flying and drinking doesn't agree with me. Thanks, though. Or is she going to perceive that as me being rude, perhaps? I don't know. I don't care. I all I'm saying is, yeah, to come here today. I don't want to get poisoned. I, I don't want to get drugged. Despite that, you'll find it'll all be worth the effort. I guess that's up to you now, isn't it? I suppose it is. Well, I'll, I'll show you mine. Do show me yours. Aren't we a bit eager? <laughs> Manners, Mr. Stamford. Not all of us are caught up yet. 
Brass tacks, Augustine. I did not come all this way just for drinks. What's in there? Look, I don't know what you two have come to sell her, but I just happen to have one of the most sought after pieces of rare cinematic ephemera to ever hit the market. The camera lens? No. Huh. Well, that right there is the only surviving segment of film from the original camera shot celluloid of one Murder Mill. Ooh, the plot thickens. The earliest known work of a certain noted Artur. Allegedly. Should be worth a small fortune. So I'm told. Hate to burst your bubble. Damn it. There goes its one-of-a-kind value. Not quite. So why is Madison there, then? I... I never knew what it was from. So they all have three you separate me reels? I had to bring it to you in person if I wanted to make it. I will keep the promises I made to you. Hmm. All of you. What if I don't want to sell? Well, that would be your choice. But after 40 years of pain, why would you choose to live with more? I have to apologize again, but there are urgent matters I must attend to in my private reliquary. You're welcome to continue to make yourselves at home until I return. I really think we need to finish discussing all in due course, Ms. Castle. Well, that segment was stuttery as fuck. We were so close. I could feel the entity's force, its power pulsating through the steel mill. Until Sam Green's petty act of bravado ruined everything. The ritual disrupted. My key mangled. Yet Frank Stone didn't die that night. His essence was seared into the very foundations of the mill. An endless, agonized nightmare. I had to find the right means to awaken him. Just one thing you bastards will just never understand. You can tie us up. You can torture us. You can put us through every hellish trial your sick imaginations can come up with. But you'll never defeat our spirit. Wasn't expecting a quick time event there. Change my mind. All right, you alien scum. Do your worst. I can take it. Ah! What is that? What are you doing? 
Sounds like a chainsaw to me, Jamie. I'm assuming this is the filming of Murder Mill? Maybe? Really? It wasn't like too much? No way! Because I felt like maybe I oversold it a little. You gotta play to the cheap seats, I made. That's where the money is. Rad. How do we do, Linda? Was that a good one? Uh, let me check the gate. Uh, so we have a young Linda here now. You can check the gate on these little Super 8s? Um, no, actually, the lens doesn't come off, so... Somebody just wanted to show off all the fancy new crap they learned from the film production books in the library. I'm just trying to take the craft seriously. The craft! Jeez Louise! <laughs> so, are, are we good, or what? Yeah. I mean, it looked great. How did the blood gag look? Um, well... Linda, you did get... The blood gag, didn't you? Oh, I mean, she it's did really not. all about how Jaime sells it. I did really sell it. Yeah, but did you get any of it in frame? No. You kind of see it splash up in Jaime's face a little. Oh, Linda! I told you, I wanted a wide close-up that shows off our super cool bloody arm gag and Jaime's face acting. Not just an extreme shot of Jaime's face acting. I was in the moment. I have to be allowed to express my artistic instincts with the camera, too. God damn it, Linda. Just get the blood There's gag. There's no such thing as a wide close-up. No, that's or true. Or an extreme shot. Or face acting. It's just acting. Does anyone even care that I'm the director? Oh. Um. Hmm. I don't know what the situation is here. I'm feeling that Jamie is going out with Chris. Um. Be defensive. Of course. Chris, you're the director. But like, part of the job is working with people you trust, and I trust Linda's judgment on the camera stuff, you know? Let's just shoot both versions, and then we can see which way works better in the edit. And it'll be my way. Oh dear. Because I'm the director. Hmm. Hold still. Let me clean you off. And we'll get it on this one. If we don't, you can just make it up to me in my trailer after the shoot. Ah, right. So they are going out. Yeah. Oh, it's like spearmint cough syrup. <laughs> yeah, all my gagging was kind of real. Mm, worth you it. guys want me to leave? All right. All right. On your feet, people. Everybody back to one. We're going again. We are going again. Okay, sound speeds? Um, uh, camera speeds. <laughs> All right, everybody settle. And hold. And hold. And action. Uh, uh. <laughs> Fuck! No! Oh, dude, that is not good. You've broken the goddamn camera. What do you think you're doing in here? Uh-oh. Oh, hi, Mr. Green. Sheriff. Sheriff, right. Sorry. How many times have I told you to stay away from this place? It's we were sad. just in the middle of a take. A take? For our film production. You can't shoot a movie in here. But this is where the big climax happens. This is a condemned steel mill, Mr. Rivera. And you are trespassing. Now, unless you want to spend the night locked up in jail, I suggest you, Miss Castle, and Miss... Dixie. Miss Tammy D. Dixie. <laughs> Miss Gordon. Miss Christine Gordon. I suggest you immediately vacate the premises, and you do not, under any circumstances, sit one foot back here in the Cedar Still Mill. Ever. Hmm. 
Um, I think some of these choices don't really make an impact. Uh, let's be reluctant, though. Let's fight against the man. Sheriff Green, sir, with all due respect, we almost got this thing entirely in the can, and if we don't get our last few shots here in our main location, we're going to have to scrap the whole thing. Then you're just going to have to scrap the whole thing. Ah, oh, God damn it, Sam. All Where's right, your artistic vision? Arrest us. Yeah, what? Linda. Arrest us. For trespassing. Uh, Linda. Linda, come on. I know I'm just Robert's dad, but I'm still a cop. And you gotta start taking me seriously. Because you really, really cannot be here. Why do you care so much? I thought it was abandoned. Yeah, it's not like we're looting the place. It's not safe. Just... go home. But we've only got, like, three more little scenes, and then we're done. Well, I don't think you're gonna be doing any more filming today. Not with that. On the account of the broken camera. Hmm. So, okay. The hell crawled up his ass. Nah, he's not so bad. Usually. We're not gonna do what he says, right? Really? We can figure out how to finish the movie when we get back to the garage. Hmm. So this is gonna be set, obviously, after the prologue. I get that. He's now the sheriff. But is it, like, ten years later? Are we in the 70s now? I'm getting a kind of mid-70s vibe from this. Not just because of the dungarees, but then Linda as well. If she's like in her early 20s and then we scale back to 2024 and she had the kind of white hair and everything, that kind of would make sense, I guess? Yeah, I'm going to say this is like mid to late 70s. And it looks like Sam is looking after the place. Or he's just making sure that no one else oh, follows in uh, the footsteps. Now don't you try and pull any fast ones on Frank Stone. Me. I'll be watching. Yes, sir. Does that mean that Tom's still alive? I hope that Tom's still alive. So maybe the choices that we did make in the prologue will have an effect on the uh, the game here now. Ah. Curiosity on Main Street. Cedar Hills, 1980. Oh, wow. So we've skipped. All right. I thought this was mid to late 70s. We're actually in the 80s. Early 80s, mind you. That van looks all kinds of busted up. Might as well put candy inside. Spray painted on the side there. Vans are cool. Complete and utter disaster. Don't be so dramatic. It's not like we've got a real deadline. Ugh, who needs a real deadline when every wasted second brings you closer and closer to your ultimate cosmic eternal deadline? Gothic. I like it. She's a little bit dramatic. Hey, what are these? Oh, I got those for us all to wear when we shoot. Surprise. Wait. You guys are both acting, so it'll just be me? So you'll be like our ambassador? <laughs> yeah, not a chance. Hmm. Oh, whoa, whoa, don't open that up. I still haven't taken the film out yet. I thought it was broken. Come yeah, on, Chris. Back, but the footage is still good. Unless, you can't expose you know, the film. Ugh, whatever. We you're going to be a director. You're going to know this stuff. Last half full. Dude, just let me be upset. Doesn't Sheriff Green have anything better to do with his time? Apparently not. Like, go after actual criminals and shit? Cedar Hill is not exactly a noted hotbed of criminal activity. That's not entirely true. There was that whole serial killer thing. Hold up, what now? When was this? Uh, I was just a baby. I don't really know anything about it. Oh, you're still just a baby. And you still don't know anything. Now, be a good little baby and tell me all about this whole serial killer business. I know some stuff. 
Spill it, lady. For starters, I think that's why Sheriff Green doesn't want us to go in the steel mill. Well, yeah, that's where it all went down. So you do know stuff. <gasps> and you held back, you traitor. Yeah, because I knew you'd get all like this. Hell yeah, I would, Linda. Tell me about the steel mill killer. Well, that's where it all ended. But before that, there was a whole string of disappearances. Kidnappings, really. Murders. <sighs> so what was this guy's name? Maybe we should write him into the movie. Oh, I don't know if we... Frank Stone. Huh. So Frank Stone was actually killing people in the steel mill? Like, our steel mill? Where we were just shooting like an hour ago? That's the theory. Frank was working at the mill, but I think it was on its last legs by then. Probably not a lot of people around. They shut it down right after. Hmm. We don't have a timer on this, so we can take our time. Who? What do you think he was up to? Who were the victims? Yeah, I'm kind of getting the sense now then, the baby is going to be playing a part in this. And I think one of these characters could be the baby. Could it be Linda? I think the baby might have been Linda. Um, if that was like in 67, yeah, the ages kind of add up. They're meant to be in their kind of like late teens. Um, let's go probing. Who are the victims? Just people, some from the town, some were never identified. The killings were random. There was no pattern. Like, how many are we talking? No one knows for sure. Because they never found the bodies. They found parts. Do you know what this means? Why withhold all this until now? You would think as the director, if you were filming in this location, this infamous location of where a serial killer had been doing stuff, then, you know, you'd know about this. Let's go with Excited. Do you know what this means? That we need a new location? No, dummy. That we already have the best location. How do you... Think about it. Our movie shot in a real-life murder mill? You can't buy that kind of publicity buster. Oh... People are actually going to want to see this thing. We're going to be, like, totally famous. Okay, sure. We might get some butts in seats, but, like, what if they don't like what they see? Then we just got to make sure these last couple of scenes are going to blow the top of their heads off. Dino mate. Ah, uh, fuck, but not if our fucking camera is fucking broken. Ugh. Hey, why don't we just take the camera to the drugstore and see if we can get it fixed? So, yeah, yeah the thing is, I... Kind of spent the rest of the budget on the t-shirts. God damn it, Chris. Unless you know of anybody looking to get into film finance, we're kind of shit out of luck. Ah, uh, the fiery Latina makes her entrance. What? Uh, um. You want a piece of me too? Oh. I think I'm in love. Go with empathetic. Hey, you okay? What's up? Nothing, it's fine. Mm, didn't sound fine. As soon as mom got sick, I dropped everything in my whole life in New York to come home and help. And all he does is act like I'm not doing enough. It's like he doesn't even care what I had to give up. I'm sure he's just worried about mom. Yeah, so am I. That's why I'm here. The least he could do is try not to ground me like I'm 16. Totally. What is he thinking, right? Sorry, I guess I just needed to blow off some steam. I get it. The last thing mom needs is for us to be screaming at each other. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, and you've been doing an incredible job. I mean, it. I, I don't know what we'd do without you. Uh-oh. What? Why? Linda, where's the Jaime bell? <laughs> ring, ring. What's the Jaime bell? My... Darling brother has the tendency to uh, lay it on a little thick whenever he's about to ask for a favor. No, I'm just speaking from the heart. Okay, what do you need from me? Um, well, we're making this movie and we're so close to finishing, but we just need a little extra bit of money. Of course you do. What else is new? What Jaime's trying to say is our camera got busted today and we need a few bucks to get it fixed. Ouch. How much do you need? Uh, 
Um, I don't actually know how much we need. I don't know if this was said and I've just missed it, but let's go with the 20 bucks. Just like 20 bucks would probably cover it. 20 bucks. That ain't pocket change. I'm going to have to That's work the corner all night. Hairs cost these days. Seriously? We're trying to make this thing good and good don't come cheap. Hmm. Huh. You guys really needed to finish the film? Yeah. All right, I'm in. Who am I to stand in the way of art? You won't hey. regret it. Oh, and I get the garage tonight. What? Why? Because I need it. This is where all our editing stuff is. Well, that's the deal. Take it or leave it. Uh, all right, it's a deal. Try not to waste it. Don't worry. We'll put it to good use. You all right there? You're looking a little, uh, wiggly. I'm fine. It's just... Uh, what is in that fake blood? I think it's just mint-flavored real blood. Oh, it did say to avoid any prolonged skin contact. You washed it all off, like, right away, right? Uh, you don't think it's, like, actually poisonous, do you? It's a horror movie, Jaime. Anyone could go... Yeah, any time! <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully there's enough time to fix the camera before they close tonight. I'm not sure the drugstore clerk will even know how to fix it. Hey, think positive. It's not like there's anywhere else in town we could take it. What? What about there? I thought that place was condemned. Guess they got a new tenant. Do curiosity shops even repair cameras? There was a place like that near my grandfather's house. The owner used to tinker with all sorts of old junk. You never know. I bet they have some rad old junk, too. Your call, Chris. Oh, we gotta go to the curiosity shop. Come on! We have to go to the curiosity oh, yeah. shop. I certainly am curious. I am curious regarding too. Regarding said shop, eh? Yes, I get it. Lead the way. Man, if I didn't know any better, I'd say this place looks like it's been here forever. And a half. Maybe you should write it in. Don't tempt me. What if the owner is a... Uh, deranged serial killer who collects wayward teenagers and turns them into antiques. Then we hit the jackpot. Check out the wares. Ooh, cameras. Uh, these look like they've seen better days. They're not gonna put the best ones in the window. We gotta look inside. Ah, uh, too bad. So much for that. We can still out the drugstore before it closes. And what is it you're looking for? Old lady! Hello. Hello? We saw the cameras. We're trying to find a replacement for this. Of course you are. Please. Come on inside. Oh, I'm liking this. Creepy old lady of the curiosity shop. Now, let me see. I think I have something that may interest you, if I can find it out back. Please, make yourselves at home. Okay. And be sure to have a look around. You never know what treasures you might find. Is she, tell is she telling us there's collectibles in here? I think she is. Here? I don't know. I think it's kind of cozy. In a failed capitalist state kind of way. <laughs> Let's see. Could it have been in... No. Maybe this one? Oh, where did I put all the... So what I'm getting here like is that I'm possibly going to have to try and um, save 
not just a group from the past, Aww. but a group from the present Cute as bunny. well. Bunny mask. And we put you away. Yeah, I'm not finding... A lot of these type of games in Supermassive, you have like the Jock, the Joker, the Seductress. Um, Linda, we know, is going to survive at any rate because of the fact that she's, you know, in the later part of the timeline. Chris, I'm finding very annoying so far for her over-enthusiasm for everything. Hami, or as I'm just going to call him Jamie from here on in, uh, is, you know, the nice guy, the nice guy routine. And Bonnie, I, I'm hoping we see more of Bonnie because um, I'm loving that goth girl look. What do we got here? Dear Mr. Olsen. Never owned this place before, had some lousy luck. This letter will serve to confirm the agreement regarding the sale of Ned's Nutty Nednacks. All relevant legal paperwork has been signed and you should receive payment by month's end. My client also wants to extend their sympathies to your recent hardships. If there is any lesson to be drawn from this, it's that fire, theft, and casualty are not things that only happen to other people. Hopefully moving on from Cedar Hills will give you some distance from the bereavement. After all, time is a great healer, and perhaps one day you'll find yourself able to adopt another cat. Nothing on the back. Okay. The store recently passed into the hands of a new owner. Hmm. Can't be that old lady, right? Can we talk? Let's or, say, hypothetically, she does find a camera for us back there. What's the next move? Well, you just pay for we it. We got everything we need to finish this sucker. Well, except the mill. Sheriff Green's gonna have his eyes glued to the front gates. No way we can get back in again. Ah, uh, we're gonna have to sneak in. Sneaky, sneaky, <sighs> sneaky style. <sighs> There's gotta be another way into the mill. We have to finish. We have Or do I... That would be ah, a crow or a raven. Doth say the raven. I haven't checked. I'm not going to talk to her yet. I haven't checked out any of this store just yet. Nothing shining at me apart from the rabbit hat that I saw. Let's go in the far corner here. There's got to be a collectible in here, right? No, that's that toolbox again with the collectibles that we've already gathered. Ah. I don't know what that is, but it looks painful. Looks like something that Geiger would create. Alright, we'll just leave that there. Ah, uh, mannequins. There's a button. Oh, a smiley face. Ah, TV. Who would want to watch this creep fest? Hmm. This is the hallway? That looks like someone's rigged up the TV as a kind of security system. We can do a fast walk. Ah. I see you. I see you. Ah, film roll. Interesting. Or perhaps not. Another creepy doll. Dude. The trapper. Imagine cuddling up to that at night. So, if we talk to Linda, we're progressing through the next state. Let's, can we sneak up on the old lady? See what she's doing in here? Ah, she locked the door, huh? Okay, well, I didn't find the other collectible things that were in here. So, there probably is something. I probably missed it. Let's uh, continue onwards. 
she comes running out straight at us with a giant chainsaw. I'm gonna be like so bummed out. You're in luck. A very fine item indeed. Yes. Whoa. But may I? I insist. It's pretty old. Possible we could make it work, but it's not exactly what we had in mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, how much are you asking for it? Oh, there's a tiny little price tag on it, but I seem to have forgotten my reading glasses. Why don't you take a look? Twenty dollars. Just what we needed. Well, we got to haggle. You got to haggle. I don't know. It feels a little high for something so old. Hmm. It is quite a valuable piece, so I'm afraid I'm unable to lower the price, but perhaps I can sweeten the deal. Do that. Please sweeten the deal. Ooh. One of a kind. Handmade. It's for luck. Do you like that? We do like lucky things in these type of games. Oh yeah, definitely. Don't pass. I guess we could use it as a prop. Sure. It's a deal. Delightful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we haggled and we received a pocket mirror. Thank Are we going to see someone much. in the pocket Thanks mirror, perhaps? Oh, Maybe? It was hmm. no trouble at all. It truly is such a joy to see young people so passionate about the arts. Hmm. Yeah. Yep, that's us. And we'll never know that the old shopkeeper had 17 bodies in the back. I'm such a moron. I told my mom I'd pick up some milk on the way home. Oh, do you want me to- Hold this. Be right back. Wait, Chris. We just spent all the money. Emergency sock quarter. Emergency sock quarter? Cursed movies? Really? Must be a slow news day. Oh, can we play the arcade? Fear Trap! Everyone loves Fear Trap. I could so find a place for these in murder mill. El Bluto if firecrackers, pull them, they spare, go bang. Which we absolutely do not. I not steal one? Just tuck it into my pants or something? Aha! A waterlogged shoe. Four names, four trials. She tells me not to rush. Don't know what that means, but we'll take it. Missing Indian. Benny Baker. I hope they're found. If you can identify this missing youth, please call Cedar Hill Sheriff's Department missing persons. Benny Baker, eh? Alright. Well, we've got the milk. Uh, 
Chris. Robert! Well, wait, I thought you worked at the library. How would you know? Don't think I ever saw you come in. I got spies everywhere, man. So, Linda. Busted. <laughs> <laughs> you can always come in yourself, you know. Books don't bite. Uh, Linda's the bookworm. I'm more of a movie worm. Mm, I don't think that's a real kind of worm. Neither's a bookworm. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so we're uh, about to close on life. Awkward Two laughter. Minutes, so. Oh, right. Yeah. Ring me up. <laughs> All right. That'll be 25 cents. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You sure don't see coin like this working in the library. Actually, you don't see any coin. <laughs> it's volunteer hours. Not so bad if you like to read, I guess. Mm, true. We've got a rad horror section, too. Didn't know you were a horror guy. Just books? Movies, comics, too. Whatever I can get my hands on. You know, Jaime and Linda and I are all making a horror movie. Down at the old Cedar Steel Mill. No kidding. We could always use an extra hand if you're into that kind of thing. Uh, super into it but does my dad know you're going into the mill he watches that place like a hawk uh yeah we had a little run-in with him today but we're gonna sneak back in to shoot the rest oh he's right behind you he's right behind you man i would love to be involved involved in what hey dad yeah uh chris was just telling me about a um a... We're putting together a fundraiser. To show movies at the library. I don't think you buy, your dad buys it. Okay. Oh, <laughs> that, that was the... Home? Okay, oh, of yeah. someone uh, who knows you're talking absolute BS. Uh-oh, here comes the lecture. Chris, I'm sorry I was a little harsh with you and your friends before. I just wanted to make sure you're taking me seriously. Oh, provocative. They told me about Frank Stone. Yeah, let's uh, maybe if we open up a little bit about Frank Stone, he might open up to I us a little it. bit more, right? They told me about Frank Stone. Got to be a lot of demons in a place like that. When you spend enough time in my line of work, you realize every place has got its demons. You ready? Take care. Hey, hey, hey. I can get you back into the mill without him knowing. Oh, Robert, Just you say little. The word. Oh. Let's make a movie. <laughs> I have worn many masks over the centuries. Dr. Augustine Lieber was renowned, professional, and trusted. Frank Stone confided in me, allowed me to unlock his potential during those dark days in the psychiatric ward. And now, a new guise, a new timeline. A new chance. Giving them the camera, I admit, was unfair, even for me. They couldn't know what power they held in their hands, nor what cruelty awaits them in the steel mill. Oh no. But what true creator wouldn't suffer for their art? Augustine was the old creepy shop lady all along. 
So there you go guys, that's part one of the casting of Frank Stone. Um, so far I'm quite enjoying it, I'm getting to know the characters, um, I, you know, there's a lot of stuttering going on, that's probably more like my rig than anything else, but uh, yeah, it is kind of a bit of a drag when that does happen. Uh, maybe I'm gonna have to upgrade, who knows. Um, I'm liking the, um, the characters so far, I'm liking the storyline, it's quite a slow build. Uh, the three timelines is quite interesting, so we've got 2024, uh, where Madeline and an older Linda and Stan, the hair bun man, are there. Then we have the 1980s, where we have Hami, uh, we have Bonnie, we have, now we've just in, uh, enlisted Robert into our, into our group, it seems, to finish off the movie. But um, not entirely sure what the uh, what the whole premise is with regards to how the hooded, robed figure, Miss Augustine, is going to bring Frank Stone back. Perhaps um, is there something with regards to the movie? I feel like the movie's obviously tied related to the spirit of Frank Stone, perhaps. Um, but to what end? What is she trying to do? Um, I still think that the baby from the 1960s is one of our characters in the 1980s. Um, but we'll see. Yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. I hope you are too. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'll see you in the next one. Stay ghoulish. Bye.